Well, the New South Wales election is not that far away and new research indicates it will be a very close race. The difference between the two major parties on key voter issues is very small indeed. Joining me live now is the director of Red Bridge Group, Simon Welsh. Simon, great to see you. You've landed some polling on this and the non-result of it all is what's piqued your interest. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. thanks, Laura. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I mean, at, at this point, sort of what are we, about roughly three weeks out, uh, you, you'd kind of expect to sort of see the parties in, in the voters' minds having carved out their sort of issue space. Um, and what we're seeing is across the issues that are really animating voters is it's, it's kind of neck and neck. Um, so when we talk about sort of, you know, head to head, who do you think is better on cost of living, neck and neck? Who do you think is better on housing, neck and neck? Even who do you think is better on climate, neck and neck? There's, there's no sort of clear sort of differentiation. Um, and, and that starts to, to create some interesting challenges if, if you're not getting that kind of issues differentiation. So where, where do you then start to look as a political party in your campaign for differentiation? I think what we'll probably start to see is, is a shift towards more values-based differentiation. So uh, what I mean by that is is either values around the leader, and, and I don't think it's any surprise. I think there's a piece today on Chris Minns and the, the Minns family. I don't think that's a surprise in, in that sort of context. Um, and it, there's there's problems and advantages there for, for both sides. For, for the Liberals, we, we know that there's sort of a bit of a coldness around the Premier. Um, people haven't warmed to him in the same way that they sort of warmed it and, and loved Gladys Berejiklian. Mm. Uh, for Labor, it is hard to build that kind of personal kind of uh, appeal when you're when you're an opposition leader. Mm. Uh, you just don't have the time and the capacity. And on you know the value side, we know that the the Liberals' values brand, in a broad sense, um, is is having real problems with a more progressive Middle Australia. So. It's interesting. It's messy, um, but it's but it's really tight at the moment. Yeah, so not a huge difference between the two major parties in the eye of the voters or between the Premier and the wannabe Premier. So that kind of makes sense because Labor, what I'm picking up, is running a big it's time factor. Um, you know, when I interviewed Chris Minns a couple of weeks ago, he said he wants to be Premier because he wants to fix the problems in New South Wales, but didn't go on to articulate big problems. And then he you know, essentially said asking for 16 years is a lot, which is the yeah. it's time factor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 the, it's that sort of, yeah, that values-based, very broad sort of uh, almost, almost in a sort of an emotional appeal in, in the sense of do, do you feel like your life is better off now than it was, you know, when, when this mob come to power in 16 years is a long time. And we're certainly seeing that, you know, this, this idea of, well, maybe they've had long enough, my life isn't better off, cost of living and those sorts of things right now, so maybe it is a bit of its time. Mm. I'm sure that the Liberals will, will roll out a kind of steady hand on the till, you know, the times times are crazy, we need, we, you need security, you need certainty and those, those sorts of things. But the, the other thing I think that's interesting that's come out of this polling is we, we are seeing you know, a, a significant bleed on the Liberal primary, enough to, to cause them serious concern in a number of seats. So, mm -hmm. again, this is sort of, yep, yep, Labor's doing good. But that bleed is scattering. So Labor's picking up some of it, but it's not picking up all of it. And, and it may not even be picking up a majority of it in some places. It's scattering to a lot of those minor parties. And we know once it goes to those minors, particularly on the right side for the Libs. So they're, they're, still, they're still fighting this two-flank problem, even in this election. They're losing votes to the right. Um, and we know that once it goes into that space, it tends to wash around and can exhaust in an optional pro preferential voting system, so it may not come back on preferences. Mm. And they're still fighting this flank on the left with these sort of teal community independent types as well. So they've, they've got some real challenges to, to not only stop the bleeding, but have to claw back some of that, some of that that's already bled. So it's complex, it's tight, it's 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 neck and neck. Labor's probably got the sit coming into the coming into the home straight, but uh, the next three weeks are going to be fascinating. So should we be talking seriously though about the possibility of minority government? I, I'm very cautious about this, Laura, because I've said that in two of <laughs> the last elections, and I've been wrong on on both of them. Um, Looking at the polling mathematically, it's it's a live possibility. It's a live possibility. I, I think it's more probable than it was in Victoria, and we saw where, yeah, we saw where Victoria landed up, um, like yeah. 
ended up being an absurd suggestion, but um, <laughs> it's it's definitely it's definitely possible because of that demographic cliff that, that we've spoken about. That that, that demographic cliff that, that Labor faces in New South Wales, where it's it's hard to get just a run of seats in a widespread swing, uh, you know, particularly through those Sydney suburbs um, to the to the particularly for Labor, the South and the West. Mm. It's hard to get a run on because those seats are so patchy in a demographic sense. So. If, if it happens, that'll be why. Uh, Chris Beans is on one of the most marginal seats, if not the most marginal seat in the state election, but no one's really talking uh, about how marginal uh, that is. Is he at risk? Nah. <laughs> I, I think anything Labor's holding in those Sydney suburbs at the moment will come back to them. Uh, I think that the swing is certainly showing it's going to them, not away from them in those areas. So I think I think he's right. It's just whether that swing is widespread enough and big enough to um, to to win the you know the significant number of seats they need to win. No such thing as a universal swing. Uh, we know that, uh, and it's become increasingly apparent the more elections we see. Simon Welsh, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Laura.